think it started my um, the journey started my first year uh, with having Justin Valley Joe, um, Stefan Brown, Emilio. Um, all those guys were guys that were here that was invested in the in the school. Um, just coming off their leadership and, and their energy from the previous year. Um, that year we my first year we went twenty two and ten. We were district runner ups. And then the following year with Cornelius Reynolds and, and Stacy and Lee maturing a little bit more. Um, Kendrick Williams. Um, we we played a whole lot better. We ended up nineteen and nine and then this year is the end result of of what we um, have led up to. Um, each year we've gotten better, um, we've gotten stronger. Um, so we just want to keep the journey going and, and keep the energy going. And hopefully that we, next year we have this conversation, we'll be in the Final Four of Knox State Champions. I remember when I was like in the eighth grade, I used to get the newspaper in my second period of class and read all like preps, like the sports and scoreboards. <clears throat> and they'll say like Atlantic's losing, Atlantic's losing, Atlantic's losing. And like you always see Mainland and Creek. So that was like the school to go to. I said, well, I heard like Atlantic wasn't really a school to go to. If you want like a standout, if you want to win games and like try to be a contender for a state championship. Um, like it was hectic and everybody was at each other's throats all the time and we just didn't connect with the team because our coach wasn't coaching us right. I was uh, fortunate to catch um, Atlantic versus Mainland and I thought Atlantic had a good basketball team. Um, saw some good individuals and I uh, just didn't think they played well together as a team. You know, trying to learn a new system, a new coach, things of that nature. So. Um, there were a lot of things kind of going against us, you know, at that time, but, um, but you know, made the best out of it. So, um, when an opportunity came uh, for me to um, come to Atlantic, I was actually in New Orleans at the Final Four, NCAA Final Four, when I got a phone call about there may be an opening at Atlantic. And at that time, I was very, very interested in Atlantic. I um, was coaching middle school basketball. I had just won my first um, county championship and had some good players that were um, going to come to Atlantic. Um, came to an interview. Things just didn't work out. It wasn't my time. And so um, that's when they chose Coach LeFave. And so, you know, God has a way of making things come about round to you if, and making it in a better situation. So. Um, new AD, Coach Smith, um, Tim Smith called me and um, said he was a new AD and was interested in me coming over being a um, head basketball coach. And I kind of wasn't interested um, because I wasn't enthusiastic about the first go round. And so I told him I, I'll think about it. Uh, so I talked with my wife and, and, and prayed about it. And I asked God for us to send me a sign to to see if um, this would be something that would be good for me. So um, I got a sign. Um, my wife gave me the thumbs up to um, get back into coaching. And and here I am. Well, you know, Coach Howard brings intensity. Uh, there's no uh, there's no time off here. You know, uh, we play year-round. The kids are getting it. Um, you know, Coach Howard is, uh, he gets the most out of his athletes, and I respect that. Uh, come on, let's try to get a match today. Um, and let me know what it is. Uh, we got to work hard and get strong so we have a um, continue to repeat the season that we had this year. It starts now. It don't start next year. It starts now. All right, let's get to work. Special, but what I loved about this team is it didn't matter who scored. They are very unselfish, and I think that's something that's unusual in today's uh, age of basketball. There really wasn't a... Um, we have some players that are superior, but they share the basketball, they share the credit. Um, defensively, they play with a lot of intensity, so just uh, a good group to be around. 28 and three broke the school record. We won districts. We beat every team in the county, beat our rival with Creek, beat everybody. It's that system. Coach Howard put in this system. It's like a kill or be killed. The sixth period, you see the atmosphere, it's, just, it's crazy. It's just the system. We're really a family. We hang out with each other. We do everything together. I feel like players at Atlanta High School, like, you know, we're going to represent our school and so that in a, you know, in a generous way and so like that, like, you know, we're not all about, you know, being cocky and so like that with team players, so like that some teams, you know, like, they have that one player, they want to be that guy and so like that. And so we just, like, you know, we bond together and so like that. Like, we get along. We'll, we go play pickup. 
So it'd be like my five from Atlantic versus anybody in the county, their five, like grown men, adults, women, it doesn't matter. We just play ball, we just go out. Um, we, on Fridays, we might go see a movie, go get pizza, go out to eat, um, hang out at each other's houses, spend the night, play video games. We just build a bond and this is where it's like building the court. Um, every single athlete on our JV and basketball team has been eligible throughout the year. Um, they dress the right way, they act the right way, they're, they're very uh, respectful young men. Uh, we have one already that's already qualified for the NCAA through his test scores. So Coach Howard does a great job of making sure that the uh, academics come first. Um, all year, uh, my kids was talking about they can't wait for the Spruce Creek Atlanta game. I told them there's more to the season than Spruce Creek Atlanta game. It is a great game. It's a great rivalry. It's a game that needs to be played every year, home and away. Um, we love that atmosphere. It was crazy. We uh, we probably turned away probably five, six hundred people at the door. Uh, standing room only. Uh, Lee Williams hit a couple of big shots. Kevin Beans went knocking out some free throws. Uh, it was awesome. awesome. I was actually sitting here at this desk uh, talking to my staff and got a phone call and said, Coach, you need to come outside and see this. I said, what are you talking about? I'm getting ready to get ready for a game. So I walked outside. It was over 300 people in line through the parking lot trying to get in here that could not get in the building. And the lead up for it was huge too. I mean, we had 300 people that couldn't get in the gym. And it was just remarkable because there was JV games and then a girls varsity game. And we were thinking people might leave, you know, like after the girls game or after a JV game, they all just stayed. So we couldn't put more people in there. Our students were, um, as spirited as I've ever seen them. Just the fact to uh, win that game in our gym was very exciting. Creek, we were the underdogs. Bruce Creek was the giant, and we were the Goliaths, and, and, and we were David in this situation. And we just, we played hard, we played well. We didn't let the hype get to us. We just played well, we did what we were supposed to do. We stayed within our game plan. Nobody tried to be bigger than what they were supposed to be. They stayed within their, their ability. We played well, we played a great game, and we was very successful. Robert was the first to transfer over here, and then he just told me about the program and how it could really benefit me, and things weren't going where I needed them to go at Creek, so I knew Howard was a great coach, and he could put me in a great position to succeed, and that's what happened. Played with him on his team at Campbell Middle School, so you know, coming over here was the same stuff for middle school. And um, I think it's a faster pace of basketball, and like, it is a better opportunity for me to come here. I chose to learn it because everybody told me that there was a good basketball system here. They told me that Coach Howard was a great coach and he would be the guy for me. I had kind of options to go to either Creed, Mainland, or Atlantic, and I was zoned for Atlantic, so it kind of worked out. And on top of that, my middle school coach got the job, and it was, just, it was like good after that. I just seemed like we did one to two champs and got deep into the playoffs and did stuff like that. So I wanted to be a part of it, and it, and it felt really good. That's the first school I heard about. Yeah. My brother used to go ahead, he used to play football and they had a pretty good program back in the day. Well, Lee and Stacy are very special uh, basketball players. Um, had an opportunity to coach them in middle school. Both of those guys won um, two middle school championships for me and, and very, played very well. So they came in knowing what my expectation was as freshmen. Um, they came in, it was a, it was a challenge for them. It, it, was, it was something that, that they had to come in here and work hard. Uh, I'm the type of person, I don't give anything. You have to work for it. You have to um, show that you deserve to be there. And they came in during the summer. They, they jumped right in and they competed every day. Uh, and right now, these kids are leaders in our area. Um, some of the two of the top kids in our area, and they're playing well for me. They, they represent Bruce County quite well. I'm um, looking forward to them having a great senior year. I'm excited that they have been with me for four years on varsity. Uh, with their leadership, with their experience, I think the sky's the limit with them. Well, in the county, um, I felt like I wasn't getting the respect that I needed because some of the guys that was in the top five didn't really have like the ability to play at the next level. And then it just added fuel to my fire. And now I'm in the gym, working hard every day. And like my grind is starting to show. But schools that offer me was Murray State, James Madison, FIU. North Florida, um, Incarnate Word, Bethune Cutman, um, South Carolina State, Alcorn State. I just let them talk. I don't say anything. It just, 
it just helps me. It helps me kill them pretty much in the city. Like they talk a lot of trash and I just, okay, okay, okay. When it's game time, I just, I play the best. And I ask them what they gotta say after the game, there's nothing they can say because I killed them. A lot of division twos has been talking to me. Um, a lot of like invites to camps and little things like that. Um, Stetson University out in D-Land, they've been talking to me. Um, VMI, they've been talking to me. So division one, um, I got like, a couple of looks and things like that. And I'm supposed to be going to Stetson in June. So hopefully I can pick that up. I was talking to um, um, a kid the other day um, about he was interested in playing basketball. You know, when you start winning, everybody wants to be a part of a champion. Everybody wants to be a part of a winning atmosphere. And the kid came and said, that you want to play basketball for me next year? And I simply said this to him. I'm not looking for basketball players. I'm looking for elite basketball players. I think Atlantic is at the point now where we are an elite program. We're looking for elite players. And we appreciate those guys that come here that want to be a part of us. But it ain't just something that we're trying to build a team here. We're trying to build champions. We're trying to win championships. So we're looking for those kids that want to work hard every day dedicate themselves not only on the basketball court but in the classroom and so that we can continue this this winning and, and continue this trail of um, elite basketball program. So it's that dog. Like Lee, when I first came here, Lee, they always made a joke about you gotta have that dog in you. It's true, if you don't have that dog in you, you don't succeed. So it's just really putting in that work, hanging out. It's not like we, we practice, but it's not just practicing the team. We just working hard. I think just continuously getting better, knowing what you need to work on, taking every coach's advice. And seriously, it's that family atmosphere is just insane. Um, you got to be ready to come here to play. You can't come here and want to play. You got to be ready to play. So I advise them to get here as soon as they can, get in here, get some summer workout with us, um, get in shape, hit the weight room, because we're going to do it all. We're going to do it all. We, we're at the point now where we are working hard every opportunity we can, and we open up the gym anytime we can open up to get our kids and prepare to go. I just go hard at it and just let everybody try to, try to feed off it because, you know, weightlifting is very important. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to do that every day and just really get big at it. Mm -hmm. and, and it helps a lot on the court, really. Well, Jock was the only sophomore I had on the team this year, and, and um, he stepped up. I mean, he played a little bit of varsity as a freshman, um, when we would go to tournaments and stuff, and I, I put him in there, see how he responded. He responded pretty good, but he was a dominant force on freshman that year, so I kept him down there. The coach convinced me to keep him on on the freshman on JV as a freshman. So um, this year as a sophomore, he he played a big role. He was the only strong post player we had. We lost Robert McKenzie to a knee injury in football, so and we lost Patrick Colbert. He moved um, to South Carolina. So uh, we lost all of the guys that we had prepared with all summer. So Josh stepped up. He, I had a long conversation with him. He told him what I expected out of him. He accepted that challenge, and he did a great job for us this year. Uh, undersized post, probably about 6'2", maybe 6'3", uh, but he has great post moves. He works hard. Um, he knows how to use his body. He keeps, he's a left-handed kid, so it's kind of awkward for him for somebody to defend him. So by him being a left-hand um, offensive player, it was hard to defend him. So he did a great job for him, really looking forward to him taking also a leader, uh, role, leadership role in, in this next coming season because, you know, he has experience. He started every game for us. I'm trying to get a more reliable jumper and like just let him on post moves. And what I do, I just work on my right hand really and then like spins, hooks, all that big man stuff. It's, it's great to return um, um, to be the coach of the year. And we had a great season. I I, I, I think it's well-deserved, well-deserved, but um, I felt like there were some other coaches that, that was in the running that probably could have won it um, this year. But I, I was thankful for receiving the award, and it felt good. I'm still walking through Walmart and people saying, Coach, congratulations on the uh, Coach of the Year. You guys had a great season. You know, you think people don't pay attention. And it's people that, that you don't really know. It's people that you do know. It's people that just read the newspaper and see your face and recognize who you are and appreciate the things that you do for kids and the things that you're doing for the community. So it was great. It was a great um, opportunity to be chosen the Coach of the Year. Um, I was excited about it. My wife took me out to um, dinner.
to celebrate. And I, it was it was a great thing, and I, I enjoyed it. And I appreciate News Journal selecting me as um, Coach of the Year. I think it really comes down to this team to win a district championship, and we have the smallest enrollment in the district too. Makes it a little bit more special. Um, we played them our first um, game over at their place. We were 15 and 0 going into the game, and they embarrassed us. So we prepared from that point on for them. So when we played them here um, during the season, we beat them, and then we met them in a district championship, and we were prepared. I mean, mentally, physically, nothing they could do uh, uh, against us that we weren't prepared for. So that's why we was able to be successful and beating them. Because, we, hey, we, our coaches, we did our homework. We studied them. We did everything that we were supposed to do, and it paid off. And our kids, our kids were ready in the show, and we played them. And uh, it was just great to be able to um, win a uh, district championship. I didn't even know it had been that long, but it's great. It's a good feeling. So make sure the expectation is high. You know, district championship is expected. It's crazy, man. Back and forth. Um, you know, we spread the floor and we shot the lights out of it. And uh, we had a student section uh, behind us. I think home court advantage was huge. And, uh, you know, we, when we went to their place, they kind of smacked us around a little bit and our kids took it personal. And, uh, came back and delivered. It was a jam pipe house. Uh, everybody was here uh, to to see that, you know, we had split during the season. Everybody wanted to see who was going to be district championship. Um, we, we It came down to a um, coin toss to see who would be um, seated number one. Me personally, I wanted to be number two because I always liked being the underdog. So Del Tona was seated number one. They won the coin toss. And then we had to fight to get there, but hey, it was, we loved it. We loved that challenge. We got there and we knew what we needed to do. And it felt great. It was a good opportunity for our kids to be on that stage. Um, we was at home. We hadn't lost no home games. We were undefeated at home. So we were ready. We were prepared. We was ready. The kids accepted the challenge. Um, I think Dale Tony felt like we lucked up and beat him that first time because he put in the paper at one point that if you don't have three Division one basketball players, you, you won't be able to beat us. And so we must have that or more. But like, I remember first got here, we played for the district championship. We came running up. I felt accomplished because you never heard of Atlantic winning anything really pretty much. And in my sophomore year, we lost first round. So it was like, we got to get it back to where it was freshman year. Then my junior year, we ended up winning it all and going to the, um, winning the district championships. And everybody was there to support us. We had like a lot of fans from either other schools that we played, like Seabreeze, they would come to our games and sit a front row seat, like all top of the playoffs. So it was just like, we had the whole county on our back. Like it, it felt good. Like it didn't really hit me like until like, you know, like after. And I just went home and stuff like that and just thought about like, you know, we, you know, district champions and stuff like that. And nobody expected us to beat Deltona at that because they were small and stuff like that. So it just felt good getting the win. This year was a challenge. Typically we are a 4A school. Um, we petitioned to um, go to 6A, uh, which is all the team that's in this area. Uh, I didn't really expect us to do well in the district this year uh, because we were going up two levels. But the kids accepted the challenge, and, and they did a great job. Uh, I mean, I think we really surprised a lot of people this year with winning the district championship by being our first year um, in a 6A district, um, being a 4A school.